Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. We start this evening with the shooting that took place early on Sunday morning on Pierce Street. We have the details now in our top story at five. Around three in the morning, Sioux City Police were called to 427 Pierce Street, an after hours club. Responding officers found a man who had been shot in the upper body who remains in critical condition at a local hospital tonight. Three more victims arrived at local hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities say their information indicates two people started shooting at each other after a disturbance in the club. They still don't have anyone in custody, so if you have information regarding the incident, you're asked to call 712-258-TIPS. And although Sunday's early morning incident is set to be Sioux City's second largest shooting of 2021, numbers are actually down overall. Sioux City police say reports in almost all categories have actually decreased within the past 10 months. There were four murders this year. That's compared to last year's total of six. 14 people have been shot this year. In 2020, there were 19. The total number of shots fired calls have decreased from 223 to 156, though Officers say not every call is a confirmed gunshot. Of course, we do still have a few months left to the year, so there could be a change in those numbers before this December. 2020 is an extremely violent year, and this is a trend that we've seen nationally. Now, going into 2021, um, it seems like some of our violence has started to trend a little bit lower than what it was trending last year. However, we've had some rather sensational cases that have come up. McClure does encourage the public to continue reporting similar incidents to their department. Meanwhile, the city of Sioux City is set to appeal an ordinance that would remove two sections of city code that deal specifically with carrying weapons inside city limits. The city is removing the rules in response to the passage of Iowa's constitutional carry bill that passed last year. The new law prohibits cities from passing their own gun laws. Currently, it is illegal to carry firearms or other offensive weapons inside city limits without a permit. The city's move today will make it so the city's rules fall in line with state law. No one was injured following a fire at a home near downtown Sioux City earlier this afternoon. Crews there were called to this residence on the 900 block of 10th Street. When they arrived, they found a fire on the second floor that had already spread to the attic. The occupants were at home at the time of the fire and were alerted by working smoke detectors inside their home. Lieutenant Garen Saldati says that October is fire prevention month and incidents like these highlight the need to check your own smoke detectors. Fires like these, uh, the rapid um, uh, evacuation of occupants inside the home is hastened by working smoke detectors, smoke alarms. Uh, so I would uh, remind uh, folks at home watching uh, that now is the time to check your smoke alarms and ensure that they work. The cause of that fire is unknown at this time. A city inspector was brought in to assess the damage to the home. It is still unclear if it will need to be red tagged. A strike is possible for employees at John Deere as they voted to reject the collective bargaining agreement with the UAW Labor Union. That agreement was a six-year contract that would have covered more than 10,000 workers at 14 facilities across the country. That includes more than 7,000 here in Iowa. Negotiations between Deere and the Labor Union began back in August. John Deere released a statement saying... They are committed to better understand employees' viewpoints. In the meantime, operations will continue as normal, end quote. KCAU 9 has yet to receive a response directly from the union. And it's time now for our first check on the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. Scott, definitely a, a beautiful day across Siouxland, uh, although the temperatures are cooler than what we were seeing last week this time. Yeah, not quite as hot as last week was, Sophie, but still enjoyable out there with highs in the 70s. That does exceed average by about 5 to 10 degrees versus where we should be. Checking out those highs around Siouxland today. 74 this afternoon in Sioux City, 73 in Yankton, 72 Cherokee, and 75 in Tacoma. Looks to be a somewhat cool night as as temperatures dip into the 30s and 40s. If you have some outdoor work to take care of, it looks like tonight and tomorrow should be just fine, but we expect to have some big changes as we get into Wednesday. A chance of some showers and storms, a strong breeze, and cooler temperatures will follow. We'll have more information coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? All right, thanks, Scott. Today, drug maker Merck is asking U.S. regulators to authorize its pill against COVID-19. It what would add an entirely new weapon to the world's arsenal fighting against the pandemic. So if it's cleared by the FDA, a decision that could come in a matter of weeks, it would be the first pill shown to treat COVID-19. An antiviral pill that 
Anyone could take it home to reduce symptoms and speed up recovery. Of course, that would prove groundbreaking. It would also bolster the two pronged approach to this pandemic, which is treatment by way of medication and prevention, primarily through vaccinations. The government's top infectious disease expert says that families can feel safe trick or treating outdoors this year for Halloween, especially those who are vaccinated. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it is an important time of year for many children. He added people wanting to enjoy Halloween should consider getting shots for that extra degree of protection if they are not yet vaccinated. COVID-19 vaccines so far have been approved for people under the age of over the age of 12. If attending one of the many trunk or treat events is more your style, you'll find a full list of area events here in Siouxland on our website. Of course, that's the address on your screen, or you can check it out on the free KCAU 9 mobile news app. Southwest Airlines canceled hundreds more flights today, this following a weekend of major service disruptions. That airline has already canceled about 360 flights today, and they have delayed more than 600 others. The Dallas-based airline blamed air traffic control issues, plus bad weather for weekend operational challenges, their words, that resulted in 1,900 canceled flights over the weekend. The FAA took the unusual step of pushing back against Southwest's explanation. Southwest Airlines was the only airline to report such a large percentage of canceled and delayed flights this past weekend. And travel experts are warning people who do plan to fly for the holidays, start booking now. With labor shortages and the pandemic, flights will be more expensive and also could be less available than normal. Thanksgiving week bookings are 35% higher than this same time before the pandemic. December is ramping up to be a big travel month too. And meanwhile, some gifts and other holiday supplies could be hard to come by this year. That, of course, thanks to that massive shipping backlog. There are currently 146 cargo ships anchored tonight off the California coast, holding billions of dollars worth of merchandise, all waiting to be offloaded. Experts say not much can be done about it. The issues were partly triggered by a COVID outbreak among dock workers, but now that staffing is back to normal crews, they can only offload cargo so quickly, and they're running out of space to store the empty containers. The cargo jam is expected to last until at least next summer. Today, the second mural on West 7th Street is set to be complete. That mural depicts three girls who represent the African-American, Southeast Asian, and Jewish communities and businesses that made the West 7th Street corridor their home over the many years. The ongoing West 7th Corridor Project's goal is to beautify the area, it began last month with the completion of a mural on the side of the American Home Healthcare Building. According to the artist, the mural took more than 90 hours to complete and roughly 100 cans of spray paint. Pretty cool. Well, there's a movement tonight trying to bring more Hispanic students into the science and technology career world. We'll show you how they're doing it coming up. And tomorrow's looking like another gorgeous day out there, but some thunderstorms are expected to occur very late tomorrow night, lasting into Wednesday. Cooler weather looks to follow that up, and we expect to have our first frost later this week. The 9 on 9 forecast after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us. Really a beautiful day to get outside. Deceiving because the temperature doesn't necessarily feel like it does uh, when you're in the sun. A lot warmer. Yeah, it is cooler in the shade than in the sunshine out there, Sophie. But all things considered, a pretty nice day. We were able to get our temperatures back above average as we take a peek outdoors from the Wayne State College camera set up in northeast Nebraska. Bright sunny skies above. Checking the almanac for today in Sioux City, it shows that the high temperature was able to get to the mid 70s this afternoon, exceeding average by 8 degrees. And the low temperature this morning fell down to 41 in Sioux City. Here's what's happening right now at the Sioux Gateway Airport. The temperature is at 70 four outside. The wind is blowing through from the north at five miles per hour. Relative humidity is low at 26% with the dew point currently stationed in the upper 30s. Temperatures are between about 70 and 75 degrees at this time throughout Siouxland. It is 73 degrees right now in Wayne and 60s and 70s moving through the extended forecast. We have a great picture to share with you tonight. This comes to us courtesy of Todd Wheelock. As you can see some of those fall colors, a little bit of yellow mixing in with the green reflected on the waters there. So a beautiful picture shared from Todd. If you have one that you want everybody to see, make sure to send it in to weather at KCAUTV.com 
When we receive your picture, we'll send you a form, fill it out and send it back, and then we'll show your picture right here on KCAU 9 News. I guess because those daytime highs have been so high, uh, we really haven't had too much color changing in the area. At least. Yeah, the foliage hasn't really changed a whole lot out there yet, Sophie. Still a lot of greens, but of course, as we uh, head into yeah. the later parts of this Quickly. week, I think we'll start to see some changes for sure. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, she's not even in high school yet, but she wants to be the first woman to play in the NFL. Meet this Ohio middle schooler helping her team to a championship coming up. But first, breaking into a STEM career, not the easiest for anyone to do. You'll meet a group of Hispanic students working every day towards that goal coming up next. A career in science, engineering, math, or technology, STEM, can be difficult for any student to pursue. Some Hispanic students tonight are having an even harder time breaking into that field, but Rogelio Maris introduces us now to a group of these young adults. To be honest, I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I first started high school. Could you say you had a career path when you started high school? Well, when I started, no, not really. Students of a Hispanic background. My mom and my dad are from Mexico. I'm from Zacatecas and my dad's from Nuevo Leon. Often find themselves trailblazing when it comes to going to college. Yeah, I'd be the first. A lot of pressure. <laughs> Everyone look, looking up to you. The challenge of acquiring a college degree made even more formidable when they set their sights on the field of science and technology. Two of my brothers right now are trying to study physics. But that's not stopping Daniel Paredes, a high school junior, Alan Morales Gonzalez, and Alexander Cruz, both high school seniors. Civil engineering, so I, and I can go into building structures and houses. All three have been students in STEM programs that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A civil engineer? I want to be an engineer. This year I'm trying to graduate with my, with my associates. They face daunting odds to reach that goal. Google and the Hispanic no, Heritage not. Foundation teamed up with other groups in 2020 to study Hispanics in STEM programs. It found that they make uh, up no, about a quarter of 18 to 24 year olds in the U.S., but only one in 10 hold bachelor's degrees. Yeah. Further, out of all the degrees in STEM fields, they only account for 10 percent, far behind white and Asian graduates, what the report identified as overrepresented groups. All I know was that it was more school and when I was a freshman, I didn't really like school, so. STEM programs engineered a path in front of these students, one that not only built the promise of a job one day, but kept their interests rolling along in STEM studies. I could build something personally on my own, and I could see how it could come out, and I could design it the way I wanted to. We've done 3D prints, I guess of basic, like, complex and geometric shapes. The Google and Hispanic Heritage Report found that while Hispanics are 17 percent of the American workforce, they're only about 8 percent of the workforce in STEM fields. It becomes clearer what it means for a Hispanic student to not only pursue an education in this field, but also land a job, not just to them, but to the countless others before them who didn't have the chance. My mom has always wanted all of us, all of us siblings to get a good career. Where they came from, they, really, they didn't really have, get a chance to get an education. Um, and I know they're working hard for me and my brothers, so that would mean a lot to them. News Nation Prime gathers news from across our country at 8 every night. Before that, Leland Vitter and Dan Abrams break down today's hottest topics, and we have a preview. A modern day Bonnie and Clyde. Put the guns down now! New video of that unbelievable shootout between teens and police. Tonight, an exclusive interview with the sheriff sergeant behind the chilling body cam footage. That's coming up on Balance. Now we'll look at tonight's Dan Abrams Live. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live. New hints in court papers suggest former President Trump could be facing possible indictments over fraud. But could those charges help him going into the next election? That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. Again, News Nation Prime comes your way every night at 8 on News Nation. If you're interested, see some of the channels listed here that carry it or check your local guide. There's a middle schooler living in Ohio tonight who says she wants to be the first girl on the gridiron in the NFL. You'll meet her right after the break, so stay with us. An Ohio 12-year-old says she wants to be the first woman to play in the NFL. Kennedy Lacey stars on her junior high football team, and they're even playing in their conference championship. Reporter Elizabeth Norieka has her story. Basically my whole life. That's how long 12-year-old Kennedy Lacey has said she wanted to become the first female NFL player. What team are you looking to get taken by? Uh, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, why is that? Because uh, they've always been my favorite team in the NFL. But for now, this determined seventh grader will hone her skills starting for the Ashland Junior High School football team. 
wearing the number 11, this Ashland Arrows All-Star is not holding back. I think when she was five, she started playing flag football. She was on her older brother Gunner's team, and my husband was the coach, and she was the only girl on the team. She loved it. And that's still the case, keeping her head in the game and giving it her all. She's a great player. She studies the game. She's not afraid of anything. She works extremely hard on and off the field. She works out on her own, goes to the gym, catches passes from her brother in the backyard. I mean, she, she does everything to earn her spot. A spot where she truly shines. This game against Worcester, another victory for her and her team going undefeated in the Ohio Cardinal Conference. While winning is great, it is her dream of playing in the NFL that keeps her going. It's really fun and cool to be able to play. If she can keep up and she can continue to have the time and, the, and work as hard as every boy out there, I have no doubt that she has a shot. We take a live look outside right now at a sunny sky over downtown Sioux City. Scott returns right after this break with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Before we wrap up at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good Monday afternoon, Sophie. We'll see you coming up at 6. But in the meantime, here's a quick look at some of the stories we're following today. South Dakota, you may not know this, was one of the first states to celebrate indigenous people on the same day as Columbus Day, which of course is today. There's now 14 states and more than 130 cities across the country that celebrate Native Americans on this holiday. We'll take a look at how teaching Columbus Day has changed over the years coming up at six. Also, exercising doesn't always mean getting up and running a mile or lifting weights. Reporter Sarah McDonald explains how one South Dakota group is exercising while also making music. That's all ahead right after World News Tonight. Jake Jones has the day's sports headlines, and I'll join you as well, of course. That's at 6. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you then, Tim, with Jake. And that looks like fun. I could get in on that drumming <laughs> as exercise fad. I wonder if they'd bring that here to the station. It does look like a good time. It does, but a beautiful day to get outside if you haven't already. You need to this evening. Yeah, really nice outside there, Sophie. We should expect to see temperatures tumble, though. Later on tonight, the low temperature will dip to 41 with a clear sky. The sunshine returns tomorrow, a pleasant day with a high of 75. Late tomorrow night, continuing through Wednesday, a good chance of thunderstorms happening. Very strong wind speeds and temperatures drop off further into the 50s and 60s for highs. And it looks like we'll also have our potential for the first frost of the season Friday night going into Saturday. All right. Well, keep an eye on it. Thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 6 with Tim and Jake. But until then, have a great night, everyone.